What's up guys, it's your boy Damon, and welcome back to another New World video. Due to popular requests, shout out to the comments and commentees. You guys have asked that I make a video talking specifically about gems, so we're going to get into that today. Now, before we get into that though, I do want to cover the basics. For those of you guys who are out there and you guys are finding gems all throughout the world, understand that your gems need to be cut first before you can socket them into a piece of gear. Also, the piece of gear has to have sockets on it for you to put a gem in it. So, to give you an example of that, you'll find a raw gem. Topaz is the example that you guys can see here. And it says that it must be cut and polished at the stone cutting station first. Then once you cut it, then it becomes a cut topaz. And then from there, you can use it and then utilize all the bonuses that come with that. Now, for the sake of example today, we're going to be looking at the tier five gems. Just because this is the full potential of what you'll be able to achieve currently in the state of New World. Now as they continue to release like more stuff, I'd imagine the legendary gems are going to come. Future dungeons are going to come which are going to require some of these gem builds which we'll talk about here in a bit. But the focus is to give you an idea of what you could become, not what you currently are right now. Alright, so let's go ahead and get into it guys. So first things first, we have the Cut Pristine Carnelian. Now the Carnelian gem you guys have heard me mention a bunch of times before. Apologies, I didn't break it down or explain exactly what this does on numerous occasions. So you guys might have been wondering what the hell is a Carnelian gem. So basically what this gem is, for those of you guys who have done any dungeons, like any five man dungeons and you've tried to tank and you found yourself struggling because you couldn't hold aggro, the reason why you couldn't was because you didn't have one of these gems. This gem is literally a requirement in order to do effective tanking in the game and once you get one of these in your weapons, specifically your sword and board, it allows you to taunt. Now you can put this gem in other weapons such as the spear, the hammer, so on and so forth. They also have taunt mechanics. So if you guys are looking to expand your tank depth and hopefully this ends up in the void gauntlet when the void gauntlet comes out. But until then, when you put this gem into your weapon, when you use defiance stance, for a sword and board, for example, it then taunts all enemies around you in a certain radius. Once you have that, you will draw all attention of the mobs and it's up to you to maintain that. Not only that, but it also applies to your shield bash as well, which is really, really nice, especially when holding aggro for your team. Once you have a carnelian gem, you effectively become a tank, but it's important to understand that you put this in your weapon slot if you're looking to tank, and in your armor slot if you're looking to not draw attention to yourself. Now, when we look at the pristine carnelian, it adds 300% more threat. So, I can tell you from personal experience, when we played in the closed beta, I was actually able to get one of these and get it slotted into my sword and made holding aggro a breeze. Like, it was really, really nice once you get one of these. Um, it's a little bit more of a struggle with earlier tier gems, like when you have like your tier 2 and you're only getting like 100%, but it's still effective. You just have to stay on the ball and pay more attention to what's going on in your team so you can manage the threat effectively. For those of you guys who don't know what threat is, threat is just basically, think of it as the chance an enemy will attack you. The higher the threat that you deal, the more the attention of the enemy you will get. However, with the Carnelian Gem, it allows you to grab instant attention. Does that make sense? And then you just have to maintain that. Now, naturally, if you put this on your armor, let's say if you're super high DPS and you're not trying to pull threat off of your tank or pull aggro off of your tank, pull monsters off of your tank, then calming could be a good choice. However, uh, there's so many other gems that I think are really, really good that you could stack with weapon mods and stuff like that that I don't know just yet in this current form of the game if calming is a, is a gem that you're going to want to use for your uh, armor slots. Now, as we get into the Cut Pristine Jasper, on the weapon, this one gives you 15% damage after receiving three hits. So this is a situation where you know you're going to be taking damage, but you're looking to ramp up. I think this is a, could be a solid choice, a semi, a semi, a kind of okay choice uh, for people who know they're going to be in the front line, not necessarily tanking, but maybe off tanking somebody great axe and hatchet combo. Uh, sword and board and axe combo, sword and board and hammer combo, but not necessarily a tank build. But this is not a good choice for people who are not planning on taking any damage or hits. So if you're a light armor build and you're trying to dodge roll and jump around and hop around and taking damage is not your thing, this might not be something that you're looking towards. 
On the flip side of that, for the armor though, with the strike ward, with the damage reduction, 3.8%. Strike damage absorption uh, per piece of armor slotted. Uh, this could be a nice defensive play if you're looking to reduce the amount of damage overall that you're taking. Now, one thing to keep in mind with damage absorption and or any type of damage reduction effects, you always want to keep in mind that this is something that you're looking at when you apply these to all pieces of armor. This is not something that you're just gonna put one of these gems on one piece of armor and then be like, man, I'm not even noticing the difference because you're only getting like 2% or 3% less uh, versus like if you're putting this on a full set of armor, then you'll really start to see a difference. Next, we get into the Cut Pristine Topaz, which is at tier five is gonna convert 50% of your damage to lightning. Damage scales off of your base weapon stat or intelligence, whichever one is higher. Naturally, if you're like a gauntlet user and or fire staff and you're looking at doing some dual element damage or maximizing your DPS output, let's say you're a full intelligence build, this is where you can start to look at these. Now, the big thing that I want you guys to keep in mind when we start looking at elemental additions to weapons and or elemental absorption in armor, I think a lot of this was put into the game not for the content that we have right now, but the content that we'll see in the future. So I want you to keep in mind that when those dungeons come out where we have bosses that are specifically weak to lightning attacks, then this could be a situation where we are sliding our weapons with the lightning damage so we can capitalize on the weaknesses. Or vice versa, if we have enemies or a lightning dungeon where everything in there is just zapping the hell out of us, turning us into a damn Duracell battery, then it might make sense to put the lightning absorption on our armor. This will also create some very some unique PvP situations later on, especially if they plan to release 2v2, 3v3, 5v5 arenas, where you know, let's say you're studying competition that you need to beat, and you know, like Joe Schmo or Ronald McDonald, the top arena contender, happens to use lightning attacks. So by building against that, this could be a play that could help you or a trump card that can make the difference in your battle. Now the same thing is going to apply to the pristine ruby, except this with this element it's fire. When we get into the cut pristine moonstone, this is where things start to get a little bit interesting. Because when we look at skills like exhilarate, which give plus 24 damage when a player is below 30% health. This is one of those situations that can be really, really strong. Use utilizing a hatchet, so my hatchet players out there, this is calling directly to you. Just because of the fact that when you berserk with your protection from death, this could be a situation that you could use to get out of key situations that could otherwise be fatal and to give yourself time to maximize damage while you either heal yourself or await heals from your teammates. In terms of the ward, same thing is gonna apply here. This is only something that you're going to be looking at if you're specifically up against slashing attacks and you're going to apply this gem to the whole set of armor that you're wearing. Now, when we get into the Cut Pristine Malachite, uh, this thing here with the 12% damage against targets with an active crowd control effect can be very useful for characters that you're building that manipulate or use a lot of crowd control. Meaning, if you guys, like, if the Void Gauntlet abilities are true and you're relying on those roots, if you guys are using a spear, a hammer, pretty much anything that's going to allow you to chain CCs um, or set up for your team or set up for follow-up attacks, this could be huge. Two-hand hammer directly comes to mind here, mainly because you have knockbacks, you got staggers, you have just stuns. There's just all kinds of stuff you could do with two-hand hammer. So again, when I look at this gem, the first thing that I'm thinking of is crowd control effects. For the armor spectral ward with the 1.9 percent elemental and physical damage absorption i think this could be a valid choice for a tank who was frontlining in a pvp situation specifically a siege and or just main tanking in a raid or a dungeon now the cut pristine onyx is the next thing we're looking at and i think this one is going to be a crowd favorite on any weapon where headshot damage does apply or any caster, for instance, that wants to deal as much damage as they can when targets are at full health so they can weaken targets for their party or themselves. The reason being is because with Brash 4, you have 30% more damage against targets with full health. And with key passives from different skill trees, musket tree, fire staff tree, things of that nature, you can create some heavy damage dealing situations 
that can allow you to capitalize on some game changing plays, especially in PVP situations. Now, in terms of setting this up in your armor, you just get the physical ward. So if you know you're in a situation where you're just gonna be taking majority physical damage, again, another gem that you're, you're probably going to want to slot in all of your armor pieces if you intend to use this for the overall physical damage production. If you're looking for both, then of course you're gonna go for the spectral ward with the Malachite, but Onyx, again, is a great choice if you're up against enemies focusing solely on physical attacks. Now, when we get into the Cut Pristine Amethyst, this is another elemental thing uh, where this is gonna be a case-by-case -case basis. Like, are you looking to add the void damage? Are you looking to absorb void damage? These are things that you'll have to ask yourself if you're going to intend to use these. Uh, with the gems and stuff that are very specific or a case-by-case -case basis, these are things, again, that I think will come in the future when we have that void dungeon or things of that nature that you can really take advantage of. I can't remember if the uh, damage from the corrupted portals is void or not, uh, but I have to get back to you guys on that. We'll talk about that again uh, come launch when I'm able to test this again, but I can't remember off the top of my head, but if that is the case and you guys are farming high level portals, 63 elites and beyond, uh, then this could be useful there, but in my experience, in closed beta, you know, being 60 plus and doing all the hardest portals and stuff like that, we didn't really run into an issue uh, if we had, you know, enough potions and stuff to go around in heals and we were okay. Now, when we get into the Cut Pristine Emerald, uh, this is another, you know, situational thing where you had 20% damage against targets with less than 30% health. So this is something that I'm looking at if I'm using a weapon like a Great Axe for Execute. When I have certain uh, abilities and talents in my tr skill tree anyway that's going to increase the amount of damage I deal and or my chance to crit when a target is below 30% this is going to allow me to ramp up and create some very interesting situations especially if you're trying to make those key plays in 1v2s, 1v3s, open world PvP, so on and so forth. This could also dramatically speed up your time to clear bosses in PvE circumstances when you're fighting those bosses with a billion HP. And once they start tapping 30% or lower, it'll significantly increase your damage output, which in turn will help your team quite substantially if you're a damage dealer. This is again something you're going to want to line up with uh, abilities and or talents that you've built and or weapons that you know work very well around this. This is a gem that can be useful if you're trying to kill running targets, people that are trying to get away and they're low. Uh, this could make the difference between having to chase them an extra 30 seconds or not. On armor, we're looking at Thrust Ward, which if you're up against spears, rapiers, sword heavy attacks, you know, things of that nature, this can be helpful there if you're gonna slot this on all your armor. But why go specifically for just the thrust damage when you, you can get physical damage reduction overall? Now, when we look at the cut, cut Pristine Amber, this is going to be a focus scaling gem, but it's going to convert 50% of your damage to nature. Um, so this is another thing that's going to fall in line with understanding the mechanics, what creatures are weak against what, to my Pokemon fans out there. But this again, will come into play, I think, a little bit later as we start to get harder and harder dungeons. With the Cut Pristine Aquamarine, this is adding ice damage to your weapon for those of you guys who want to be like Elsa. And of course, with the Ice Ward, you get the ice damage absorption. Sapphire converts to Arcane and also protects against Arcane. The Cut Pristine Diamond is something I'm definitely, definitely, definitely looking at for Void Gauntlet when Void Gauntlet comes out and or for my Life Staff users, this could be huge if you're trying to increase the amount of damage you deal overall, plus increase your outgoing healing. Uh, this could be very valuable because most of the time as a healer, depending on what you have going on around you, you should be at full health if everybody around you is doing their job. So this is a situation where most of the time you should be okay. Um, if you're in a situation where you're losing a lot of health and you're not able to manipulate this, tell your tank to put a Carnelian Gem on his weapon, all right? <laughs> now with the Wilderness Ward, it's another 1.9 physical damage and 0.63 elemental damage absorption. So also a decent armor choice if you're looking to take less damage. I gotta say that the Cut Pristine Diamond is probably one of my favorites uh, for now just because of ease of use. And last but not least guys, we're talking about the Cut Pristine Opal. Uh, this is another good one because you get plus 15% damage while your stamina is not full. 
This is going to be really, really good for people who are going to be dodge rolling, moving around, and if dodge is your primary mechanic and or blocking, this can be very helpful for you because it's pretty much a permanent damage increase because I can't remember the last time I had a full stamina bar. In terms of armor, it's just an elemental ward, you know, just to increase or decrease, excuse me, the amount of elemental damage that you're going to be receiving. So all in all, it can be a good choice. I still would probably err on the side of caution. And if I'm going for absorption, I'm probably trying to get the best of both worlds so I can get the physical and the elemental. So I'm still most likely going to lean towards the pristine diamond or the pristine malachite. The most important thing to understand when you guys are gemming and socketing your gear is to ask yourself, what are you trying to accomplish? What do you need? There are some gems that are absolutely necessary like the carnelian especially on tanks or getting that rally bonus to maximize your healing output for my healers but but the rest of it mostly is going to be optional and situational based on your individual player needs and what type of build specifically you're going to be getting into as you progress through the game as you guys play new world you guys will find especially post 50 post 60 things get quite a bit more intricate in terms of the perks bonuses stats and rewards that you guys are going to be getting and you guys will really start to see the depth of builds as you guys get into the higher level content so once you get there it's a great time to reassess the situation and start really thinking about what your end game goal is for you and how you can improve upon that every step of the way so with that being said guys uh, I just wanted to take a little bit of time and give you guys give you guys the basics and kind of talk about these gems and what they can do for you and what situations I think these gems shine at and again with the other gems that are you know elemental specific I think that those will start to shine a little bit later uh, especially if the rumors about us getting six new dungeons are true and as more and more new weapons come out and things start to get crazier and crazier the need for these other gems I think are are going to skyrocket so with that being said guys that's all i wanted to cover today if you guys got any questions comments concerns definitely let me know in the comment box below and i'll be happy to assist and we will see you guys in the next video peace